Thriving as an only parent. Why only and not single, as most people would refer to parents who are bringing up their children alone? I don't think that there's anything like a single parent. Yes, you may find yourself as an alone parent bringing up your child alone, but that child has a whole tribe around her. She has grandparents, he has uncles, he has aunties, cousins, friends, and that is family. And through it all, all these people find a way to just mold your child and bring up the child in a family, in a proper family setup that keeps them grounded. Today I'll be speaking about how do you thrive as a parent who's doing this alone. I am Kelai Wanjiro and I am a mother of an amazing teenager. Number one, know who you are. Know who you belong to. You are a child of the Lord. He calls you his own. He holds you in the palm of his hand. So no matter what life has dealt you, you have become a single parent. You are bringing up your child alone. You could have gotten divorced, separated, or lost your, your partner. But God calls you his own and he treasures you. So know who you are, know who you belong to. I have a Bible verse that speaks to me every single day. Ecclesiastes 3.11 God has made everything beautiful in its time. When I look at my life and I look at my child's life, I have seen everything God has made beautiful. When I look at my child and what she's becoming as she grows, I have seen all the puzzle pieces fit together to fit into God's plan. So know who you are know who you belong to you are a child of the lord you are a child in the kingdom of the lord so when you know who you are that determines everything in your life number two know your why rather know your purpose and your why is in the faces of your children when they get up every morning and they come into your room and the way they look up to you like you are the everything in their world they do not yes the situation is there is no mother there's no father there together but to this child, those are details. You may have to address the situation why th that they don't have a father or a mother in the home. But when you look, your why, your purpose is in those children's eyes. Number three, pick your tribe and be very intentional about this. Because you need people who will support you, who understand you, who will be there for your child, who will help you through this journey of parenting alone. Could be your mom, could be your dad, your brother, your friends, your church family, your cousins, anyone. Be very intentional about picking your tribe because these are the people who will help you bring up your child. Number four, empower yourself and affirm yourself. Do this too for your kids. As I said before, you are your greatest cheerleader. So be your cheerleader for your kids as well. Empower yourself, do the things that keep you happy. Pray every day, speak to God every single minute, whether you're driving, working in the house, cooking, speak to God, express to him your challenges because God hears and he always answers prayer. Affirm yourself with by doing the things that make you happy. Journal, write down what you're feeling, what you're going through. Go do your nails, take care of yourself. Do not let yourself go just because you are doing this alone. Because you're most for most parents, Focus becomes on the family. We tend to let ourselves go, but do not do this. Find a way to also keep yourself well. Take care of your mental health, because when your mental health is good, even your families will be good too. Number five, do not blame or judge yourself. This is what life handed you. And when you begin to navigate your life as a single parent, it can get lonely. There are many instances where you may feel like you want to blame yourself. Ask yourself questions like, why did I do, what happened to me? How did this happen? Did I make a mistake? And it can get very, very lonely. Unfortunately, friendships will change. People will start to stigmatize you. They may even stigmatize your child, but don't let this get to you. Do not judge yourself, do not blame yourself, and always speak to your child and let them know that there is nothing wrong with them. It was just what life dealt us and we have to deal with it. Do not allow yourself to get into a pity party mode. Self-pity is the worst thing an only parent can get into because it makes you start focusing on yourself and remove your focus from God, who is the author and finisher of everything in our lives. Number six, have an emergency savings plan. To be honest, this is an area I continue to struggle with to date because 
when a double income family becomes a single income one, finances can be really stretched. And you need to cushion yourself because you do not want, sometimes you may not want to change where you live. You may not want to change your kids' schools. You want to maintain a, some sense of normalcy for your family. And how do you do this? Start saving, no matter how little, no matter how small. Start saving every single day so that you can give your family some sense of comfort. As an encouragement to you who's an only parent, it doesn't really matter how or why you might find yourself in this situation. It could be by circumstance, it could be by choice. But what's most important is creating the best life possible for you and your children. God bless you.